When people say don't reinvent the wheel, they're giving what seems to be pretty sensible advice. Don't waste your time redoing something that somebody else already did before you perfectly. Well, let's talk about what a wheel is. If your objective is to transport things from point A to point B, then the wheel is kind of perfect. I mean, cars use them, bicycles use them, even airplanes use them. It really feels like if you were to spend your time researching the optimal way to transport things from point A to point B, you would ultimately just end up back at the wheel again. So I guess the idea is that you should really not spend your time reinventing a solution if the solution already exists. But what I, want to hope, what I hope to convince you of today is that most of the time when somebody tells you don't reinvent the wheel, it's usually going to be bad advice. And I say this for two reasons. The first reason is there is no wheel. What I mean by that is there simply isn't any one-size-fits-all ready-made solution that solves your specific problems. And the second reason I say this is because it shifts focus away from actually understanding your problem and moves it towards searching for ready-made solutions. This is especially true in the world of software. In today's world, most of the software is really bad. And I'm not just talking about the software written by a high school student the night before their assignment is due. I'm talking about multi-billion dollar corporations whose software is their product. Now, one thing you need to understand about computers today is that the hardware we use is insanely fast. The CPU, which you can think of as the brain of the computer, is capable of doing trillions of instructions per second. If you use computers correctly, you can hook up 10 players around the world onto a network with almost no delay. You can compute complicated physics. You can render beautiful 3D graphics to a screen, and you can do all of this 60 times per second. However, when I opened up Microsoft PowerPoint to put this presentation together, it took six seconds to load text and images onto a screen. When I use Microsoft Teams to communicate with my colleagues, and I need to scroll up to see what was said yesterday, it takes seconds for that text to load. And then even though my machine has gigabytes of memory available, when I scroll back to the present conversation, it needs to reload that text again. Twitter is an application whose primary focus is to display 280 character long text messages. And yet on your smartphone, it's often clunky and unresponsive. Now keep in mind the smartphone in your pocket is at least a million times faster than the Apollo guidance computer that was used to land people safely on the moon. Now call me crazy, but I really don't think that Twitter is more complex than landing people safely on the moon. So the point I'm trying to make here is that software is unacceptably slow. To give some scale of how slow it is, imagine if you walk into McDonald's to order your favorite fast food, and it takes literal years for the order to be complete. So how did software end up this slow? Well, uh, we as a tech society made it so. How? Well, there are many reasons, but I think the primary reason is because we shifted our focus away from problem solving towards searching for solutions. You know, as a society, we tend to Google things, and programmers are no different. An average programmer's workflow, when they're doing something that isn't particularly novel, but like a routine day job, is they'll write some code, and they'll make a mistake because mistakes happen, and they'll get some indecipherable error message that they don't understand. And because they don't understand it, the natural thing to do is to copy and paste it into Google and see what comes up. And they'll invariably end up on some question answering website. The classical question answering website for programmers is called Stack Overflow. And either they'll find that their question has been asked before, or they'll ask their question. And somebody else will post some code that claims to solve their problem. Now, quite often, it doesn't quite. But the programmer will copy and paste that code, see that it works, and then just move on. Minimal effort, maximum reward, 
most importantly, nobody's reinventing the wheel here. But the problem with this is that the code that the programmer copy-pasted very often also copy-pasted code from somewhere else and so on, kind of like forming a pyramid scheme of code. And then you can end up with this kind of monstrosity. This hugely complex code base is tasked with storing a single number in a database. Now the yellow box that's highlighted points to the single line of code that actually does this job, and the rest is just copy and paste nonsense that actually doesn't need to be there. So why do we need all these lines of code? And more importantly, who on the planet can possibly understand all of it? If you take somebody else's code that you don't understand and use it to solve the problem that you also don't understand, you actually make your problem more complicated, not less. Also, copy and paste like this can cause you to depend on code that you don't even need, and the results can be disastrous. So here's a really funny story. In 2016, a programmer deleted some of his code off the internet, and it caused millions of websites around the world to crash, including prominent ones like Facebook. Now, you might think that this code would have implemented something very complex and critical. But in reality, the code, which is simply 11 lines, merely puts spaces on the left-hand side of text in order to align it properly. Somehow, millions of websites around the world had come to depend on this very trivial piece of code that could easily be done in a single day by a competent developer, all because we were too lazy to reinvent the wheel. And the most infuriating part about this is that even with dependency on this piece of code, Many websites still fail to pad the left-hand side of their text correctly. It's mad. The point is, when somebody packages something and hands it to you and says, don't reinvent the wheel, use this, it's usually not a wheel. But in order to understand how it's not a wheel, let's have a look at what a wheel is. A wheel is often obvious in hindsight. It's simple, it's maintainable, it's replaceable, it solves a very specific problem, and it's also context dependent. If your road happens to be made out of half cylinders, then the optimal wheel shape is actually a square, not a circle. But you can arrive at the square wheel from the circular wheel through a simple iterative design process. Now you'll notice that none of these things are present, none of these characteristics are present in software. Blind reuse of code and information retrieval leads to the creation of extremely fragile and complex systems that can break at any time. And if you take this and try to use it to solve your specific problem, the only way to get that to work is to hack something on top of it and add millions more lines of code. And that's why things like OpenRice take ages to load text and images about a restaurant. Now, I get it. Sometimes, you're in a time crunch, and you just need to get your product out as soon as you can. But for all the other times, there really is no substitute for really sitting down and understanding your problem, and also understanding the tools that you're going to use to solve that problem. And if the tool that you need doesn't actually exist, you need to go and build that tool yourself. Now, I spent a lot of time talking about programming and code, but the fundamental idea that underlies everything and applies to all fields is this. Focus on solving your problem and understanding your problem, and don't focus on looking for ready-made solutions. And this is true even in the arts. The painter understands which paintbrush they want to use, not because they know trivial details about the construction of that paintbrush, but because they have an idea of the artistic expression they want to put on the canvas. The composer understands which instruments to use in their composition, not because they are well versed in the engineering of that instrument, but because they have a good idea of the musical expression they wish to tell people. Be especially wary when somebody hands you something that they claim will solve your problem, and only use it if you understand your problem and you understand the thing that's being handed to you. And honestly, if your objective is to learn and understand, which as a student it should be, 
then even if the perfect tool already exists for your problem, you should reinvent it anyways, because that's one of the best ways to truly understand what you're dealing with. It will help you to learn and understand far more effectively than if you just took the tool and used it. So the next time somebody tells you, don't reinvent the wheel, feel free to ask them, what wheel? Thank you.